Ethereum investors need to understand what the ETH devs are doing and where Ethereum is going. If you hold Ethereum, give this video a like because in this video, I'm going to explain to you with the help of Vitalik Buterin, Ethereum's founder, the future of Ethereum. Okay, so let's start with a big picture, 10-year outlook. Vitalik Buterin, what will Ethereum be like in 10 years? So Ethereum in 2032, you have a node, your node runs on your phone. Every uh, 12 seconds or 32 seconds or whatever number we uh, agree on, you download 3.6 megabytes of data, you hash it, you do a couple of uh, elliptic curve equations to check a snark, that's it. You know the block is valid. Wait uh, 12 seconds, get 33.6 megabytes of data, hash it, do some elliptic curve operations, verify the snark, and uh, valid. 12 seconds later, data, hash, elliptic curve check, valid. The whole process just becomes incredibly sleek and uh, seamless to the point where like literally a phone could even do it, right? Because it's incredibly light on computation. The only thing that it's heavy on is data and data uh, just happens to be the thing that, you know, phones are increasingly getting insanely good at and will get even better at over the next 10 years. That to me is uh, what I see the yeah, final goal being from a yeah, protocol standpoint. Make sure you subscribe to Altcoin Daily for more videos on all of crypto daily, just like this. Okay. So what about this year? What will Ethereum accomplish this year? Where will Ethereum be at, say, the end of 2023? The thing that everyone is dead set on is that 2023 is going to be the year when, um, you know, roll-ups really come to maturity. We have 4844 that gives roll-ups more space, and we have uh, the trading wheels on roll-ups that like, really get weakened um, a lot. Um, and, like, basically, uh, uh, we go most of the way to these... Uh, uh, you know, Ethereum scaling being this kind of fully trustless and uh, so not fully trustless, but, you know, most of the way to being fully trustless. So most we, tr most we trustless uh, system that kind of gets us to like most of, uh, you know, what we would call sharding being finished. And then after that, there is uh, rollups going fully trustless and then there is full tank sharding. And I think those things are going to take a couple of years longer, but like for me personally, I think after the changes in next year, like that would be the point, the first point where I would feel comfortable saying, even if nothing else happened past that point, I would be happy with Ethereum, right? And that to me is like a, the, 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 like a, my, uh, like that, that's the personal milestone for me, right? Like the, uh, you know, equivalent of, uh, like, when can we call Ethereum done if we really have to call it done? Well, end of 2023, right? So merge done, withdrawals done. Uh, so be, being able to withdraw from the proof of stake system, um, you know, basic scaling done, um, a lot, uh, you know, a lot of basic improvements done, um, enough cryptography added to Ethereum that we can support privacy uh, solutions as a layer on top. And, you know, if we need to, we can stop there, but at the, you know, we're not going to stop there. Right. And we want to kind of like go ahead and uh, try to actually make sure that the Ethereum ecosystem gets support 500 million users before, um, you know, the bowl where 500 million users are knocking on the door actually, yeah, you know, ends up happening. That's right? great. Uh, so that's probably the next part of the future, you know, the transition from Ethereum as this kind of very theoretical ecosystem that's still discovering and finding itself to Ethereum as an ecosystem that actually is, you know, tries to be useful and usable and, uh, you know, secure and, uh, and all of those things and like actually provide value for hundreds of millions of people. Very exciting. So this year is the year of Ethereum rollups, Ethereum layer twos, and really taking Ethereum to its next level. One of the fateful decisions that we made around 2020, um, this is, I think, another one of these uh, trivia that, uh, that is well known within Ethereum circles, but probably does, hasn't really kind of filtered out to the, uh, you know, the wider narrative meme, uh, meme plex is uh, the roll-up centric roadmap, right? This is basically this idea that uh, instead of Ethereum itself trying to kind of boil the ocean with uh, scaling and uh, turn itself into this complicated hyperscalable system, we would make some changes to Ethereum that would make it be more friendly to people making layer two scaling solutions, right? So layer two scaling solutions are like protocols that try to do the same thing that Ethereum does, but that plug into Ethereum for security without doing every single thing on top of Ethereum. So most of the work would happen off chain, but just enough work would or could be done on chain that if something happens, the Ethereum system would kind of keep the rest of the system honest, right? So one of the yeah, defining analogies for layer twos in general is yeah, like the concept Supreme of a court, court yeah. right? Like the concept of a, 
Exactly. The Supreme Court is uh, what things are kind of ultimately uh, uh, rest on, but you don't literally have the Supreme Court hearing every single case, right? You have a whole bunch of these uh, appeals courts and like a whole bunch of lower courts. And then you just have the facts that the threat of a court uh, case being possible uh, can uh, drive honest behavior without uh, most of uh, that behavior ever needing to get into a court system, right? So first there's sharding, and then there is dank sharding, which is uh, this uh, version of uh, sharding, which was uh, created by an Ethereum uh, researcher named Dankrad. And then there is proto-dank sharding, which is called that because it's a stepping stone to full dank sharding. It doesn't technically shard data yet, though it does shard history and computation. Um, but it was also uh, created by another Ethereum researcher whose oh, name is Proto Lambda, right? Uh, so yeah, so Proto Dank sharding happening next year. 2023 is the year that Ethereum's training wheels really come off. The other thing that um, like I've talked to the roll-up teams that they all want to do next year is they want to start taking off training wheels, right? So the roll-ups and uh, layer twos that exist on Ethereum today, they basically all have what I call training wheels. like some kind of backdoor that lets developers uh, come in and like say stop and change the protocol if they see that some kind of bug has happened. And like training wheels are obviously a, a you know, an affront to the moral idea of trustlessness and um, all of those things. And nobody wants training wheels to be the status quo long-term, but basically yeah, they're like a compromise saying, okay, people, uh, like we want to hit the ground running and we want applications to be able to start, um, you know, start deploying on layer twos before we can be fully confident that the thing, that the thing has no bugs. And so we're going to have a backdoor for a while. And then once uh, things are stabilized and once we're confident enough in the code, then we can finally start That's taking great. the backdoors out. Right. And uh, so next year, I, yeah, some of the projects uh, are going to actually, I, I think might be actually taking their backdoors out. Some of them are going to be kind of limiting their backdoors and going to a hybrid, right? Where a backdoor exists, but there's like, it, it's not like one person that, that, that manages it. And it's not even a multi-sig with a 51% threshold. It's like a multi-sig with an 80% threshold or a 75% threshold with members that are like highly distributed between, uh, between a bunch of different organizations. And so it's like a halfway house between, uh, you know, being a yeah, kind of trusted side chain uh, the, in the style of, um, you know, something like Liquid or in the style of something like Polygon today versus being a fully decentralized system, right? Where it's like, you know, the humans have half the votes and the code has half the votes. That's probably mm -hmm. one sort of mathematically accurate way to think about it. And so if like you the want, Senate like, in the house, if you want to override the code, you know, right. exactly. You know, if even a majority of the humans are dishonest, as long uh, like, unless, you know, you have like, almost all the humans are dishonest. Like if it's just a majority, then, you know, the code still kind of car uh, carries the day, right? But so the idea would be that if there is some political controversy uh, that then, you know, you're not going to, you know, you could see yourself getting 51% of the humans, but, um, you know, you're not going to get like 80% of the humans. Whereas if it's a bug, then like that's something where it's easy to get like a, you know, 100% uh, uh, even agreement that that the bug needs to be fixed. You know, not total uh, kind of, uh, you know, take the training wheels off and leave it to the code, but like a very large step toward that. Give this video a like if you're learning something. And by the way, take the training wheels off. That's just Ethereum's base case because some Ethereum teams are more ambitious. Some Ethereum teams are planning to do a lot more. One of the teams I talked to actually is more ambitious than even that. One of the, the, their approach is to basically say, we're going to have a system where we only turn on the humans when someone submits a proof that the code disagrees with itself. So if the code can create a valid proof for something that's valid and, and, hmm. and for something that's invalid, then it's inconsistent. And so um, you switch to humans. Yep. Like, exactly. If you make a proof of inconsistency, right, which is much easier than a proof of incorrectness, like basically just show that it provides two different answers to the same question, right? Like, uh, you know, if like if I ask uh, Chad GPT, you know, who was the president of the United States in 1850 and I ask it 10 times and one of those times it gives a different answer, like that's 
that by itself is proof that yep. that it's not you know a, a perfect system just like even to someone yep. who knows nothing about us history right it's like that kind of idea like the video subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments what altcoins you want us to cover going forward i'll leave you with this piece of ethereum culture invented ethereum when he was just a kid and that's not even the coolest thing that Vitalik Buterin did. That's it. That's all I Get your tickets to Bitcoin 2023 Miami, May 18th through 20th, Miami Beach. This year, use code ALTCOINDAILY, 10% off. This is the biggest Bitcoin conference of the year. Ticket prices continue to increase as we get closer to the event. Use code ALTCOINDAILY, 10% off. Get your tickets now.